Let's move on now to topic number four. And the fourth topic today comes to us from our Patreon supporter, Dan Ketchum. And thank you so much, Dan, for being a Patreon supporter. Um, CBS chairman and CEO Leslie Moonves is apparently being forced out over a sexual abuse scandal, and it looks like he might get a $100 million severance package. Is it right for someone to get this golden parachute if he has done this kind of thing and has damaged the CBS image? Surely the CBS board has other options and doesn't really have to pay him this. All right, thanks a lot for the question, man. And this is, I almost didn't take this question because I normally don't like to talk about this type of stuff, but it is fascinating. So let's get into it for a second. First of all, let me warn all of you that what I'm going to say is going to make nobody happy. All right. No one's going to be happy with what I'm about to say. And that's fine. I'm very comfortable saying things nobody's happy with. Um, but I think it needs to be said. So for those of you who haven't been following along, uh, big head chief over at CBS, the guy who led CBS to becoming the number one network in America. And by the way, with the news of him stepping down, the stock has fallen on CBS. The shareholders want him um, in the position, maybe not really, but on a practical level they do. And with the news of him leaving, their stock has dropped. Anyway, the guy who has led them to being the number one network in America, multiple reports have come out. Uh, I believe it was from the New York Times uh, that I think the number is now up to a dozen um, former employees that claim he straight up assaulted them, forced them to do things, and women who refused to do things got blacklisted and lost their careers and lost their jobs from him. Now, at this point, it's important to point out, as it always is, that these at this point are all allegations. None of this has been proven. Therefore, it's all allegations and at that stage. But still, it's something that CBS has to sit up and take notice of when there's this many people. And so they're doing the right thing and addressing it. Now, the news came out that CBS and Leslie entered negotiations to have him leave and that he could be getting upwards of a hundred million dollar payout to leave the company. This, understandably so, has some people very upset on one way to look at it is that you are rewarding this guy for his bad behavior. That's a fair, that's a fair criticism that a lot of people are looking at the situation, much like you point out in the email that it looks like, depending on how you look at it, that you are rewarding this dude for his, I'm using the words bad behavior, but it goes beyond that. It's more than just bad behavior, if true. You're rewarding him for his bad behavior. And that is certainly a legitimate criticism. Here's the thing. This reminds me of a situation I had a bunch of years ago. Now, for those of you who don't, who aren't Canadian, you may have never heard of this. But one of the, if not the most infamous murder trials and murder cases in Canadian history was that, and if you're Canadian, you'll recognize, you'll already know what names I'm about to say. Uh, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. These names are infamous in Canadian culture. Back in the 80s and 90s, this couple... Um, seduced, drugged, kidnapped, and murdered uh, a number of young teenage girls. One of them that they murdered was Carla's sister. They, together, they raped, drugged, and murdered a number of girls. As the case started to um, come to its conclusion, the government made a deal, the prosecution made a deal with Carla Homolka that she, I can't remember how much time she got, whether it was 10 years, 15 years, something like that. For argument's sake, let's just say 15. It might've been a smaller number. It might've been a bigger number, but for argument's sake, let's say 15. Carla Homolka got 15 years in exchange for her testimony against Paul, the husband. That the prosecution thought was really the main villain behind it all. I mean, she was clearly vile, but they saw him as the main one and they wanted to make sure they got him. When news of this plea bargain got out, 
a lot of Canadian citizens were outraged, understandably so, understandably so, that this woman who participated in the kidnapping, rape, and murder of these young girls is getting off with just like 10 to 15 years, whatever the number was. A lot of Canadian citizens were really, really upset with that. Now, fast forward a few years, I'm sitting in my criminal law class. And our professor brought in a judge from the Ontario Superior Court. And he came in and talked about that case to us. And he gave a really interesting perspective. He said this, that would not have been popular with a lot of Canadian citizens, but he said this. He said, look, it was an unpopular decision for the prosecution to offer Carla Homolka that deal. But... This particular judge told us in our class, it was the right decision because there was some doubt, he said, that they were going to be able to convict. There was some doubt. They had a pretty good case, but there was some doubt that they were going to be able to convict Paul Bernardo of these crimes. And what the judge said is what absolutely could not happen was that Paul Bernardo walks. They said that that was the one thing, like, was it good that Carlo Homolka gets a plea bargain deal? No. But was it at all acceptable that Paul Bernardo walks on this? It couldn't happen. It simply could not happen. At this point, they all knew he did it, but could they 100% guarantee that they were going to get a conviction when they took it to trial? And at that time, it looked good, but they weren't 100% convinced. And what the prosecution felt, what was best for the country was that they guarantee this guy gets convicted because of what he did. And if that means we have to swallow the bitter, bitter pill that one of his partners in this, Carla, gets a 15-year sentence instead of life, like she should have got, then that's the price we have to pay to make sure that this guy doesn't walk. It was for, even though the public didn't like it, it was for the public good. For the public good, we had to make sure this guy got it. Now, what does this whole thing have to do with the Leslie Moonves situation? It reminds me a lot of that situation because of this. Right now, what CBS cannot afford to do, in my opinion, is have this guy stick around. In my opinion, if I'm a CBS executive, in my opinion is... The number one priority, like for the government, was we have to make sure that Paul Bernardo gets convicted. If this thing is, we've got to get him removed from his position and we have to get him removed as quickly as possible. What is best for CBS right now is to get him out and to get him out as quick as possible. And if that means we got to go in and negotiate with him and offer him a payout to get him out, so be it. What is best for CBS is to get him out. Let the government and the prosecution and the law deal with him as far as any other ways he may have broken laws and he'll get what he, what's coming to him, but that's the courts to decide, that's prosecution to decide, let them worry about that. What is best for CBS, we gotta just gotta get him out. The longer he is in here, with all this stuff going on, the worse it is for us and our company. We gotta get him out. It is what's in everybody's best interest right now to get him out as fast as possible. Now, what everybody forgets about is that these people have contracts that guarantee them certain things. And what everybody forgets about is while he's being accused of all this stuff, he hasn't been found guilty of anything. And what CBS runs the risk of doing is like, we, this could be dragged out for months and months and months. It could be dragged out forever. We have to come to an agreement with them just to get them out now and then let the courts deal with them. And if that means that we have to give them a little bit of money just to get them out now, then give them some money and get them out now. Now, what has been updated in the past 24 hours is that CBS and Leslie have reached an agreement He's stepping down, he's, he's, he's out, and they have a $120 million uh, buyout package that's going to be held in trust pending the result of investigations. Now, my guess here is 
this the way this is all going to play out, and this is just my guess, is that um, they're going to say, you know, hey, we're just our investigation has come up limited, but we found that you did wrong here and here and here. Therefore, you're going to get a percentage of this hundred and twenty million dollars, but not all of it. And then the rest will have to be up to see if prosecutors want to charge this guy with anything. But that's a totally separate matter. So, what people got to understand is. It's fine to feel outraged and it's fine to feel upset, but being outraged and upset doesn't change the fact if there are legal precedents, if there's legal procedure, if there are contracts, enforceable contracts involved that says, hey, if you get rid of me for any reason, you got to pay me this. Well, this is for any reason. So it looks like they came to a bit of a compromise. And honestly, as, as just an average um, entertainment fan, I really don't care if they give this guy some money, I don't care. I just think he needs to be ousted. I just think he needs to get out. And whatever facilitates getting him out faster is the best thing to do. And then let prosecution deal with them. Then let the government deal with them. I think if I'm a member of CBS or if I'm just an average fan, the best thing in everybody's interest right now is just do what you need to do to guarantee you get him out and get him out as fast as possible. I really don't care if he gets a few bucks on the way out. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. doesn't affect me whatsoever. All I know is we got to get him out. If I'm a CBS exec at this point. So that's kind of my feeling on it. I know that's not going to be popular with anybody. I know everybody just loves being angry and everybody just wants, no, throw him out and give him nothing and blah, blah, blah. And that's great, but that's not how the real world works. If they don't give him something and they don't make these arrangements with him that we're setting this in trust where you'll, you'll probably get this, this, and this. If they don't do that, he could drag this out for months and that's not good for anybody. That's just my opinion. And you know what? My opinion could change on that. I'm not sold on that opinion. That's my opinion right now, but I've only thought about this thing, this situation just a little bit. I mean, honestly... You could ask me tomorrow what I think about this and my mind could change and... You guys may be able to send me in some arguments. I've got an open mind about this. You could totally change my mind. I'm not willing to fall on this sword, but that is how I think about it right now. That the best thing to do is just do what you need to do to ensure we get them out and we get them out as fast as possible. Then let the law deal with them. Uh, but that's just, again, I'm not going to fall on that sword. If you guys have a different opinion, your opinion might be better than mine. Totally might be. Drop, jump into the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about what you guys think. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Let's move on now to the final emailed in topic.